before going carnivore, I had to do something. I was yeah. having terror. I was having hallucination. Aww. I couldn't Aww. drive. I couldn't sleep. At 330 pounds. I was an alcoholic and I was in an abusive marriage. Hello, everyone. I'm with Adrienne tonight and I'm super happy to talk to her. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, you're so welcome. Um, yeah, I think I've wanted to talk to you for a while, actually. And then it's just finally getting the time to like work it out, you know? Yeah, it's so hard. We're both moms. Both oh, man. Ubers. It's busy. Yeah, it's busy. And I have, do you have a day job also? I do not. I'm just, well, I don't mean just. I'm a very busy stay at home mother. <laughs> uh, that's I have awesome. two, a five, 11, and 12. So it's, so oh good. my gosh. No, that's like three full time jobs. That's, that's, I, I'm lucky that I can work from home and I have my kids and I can do YouTube and I've got a super supportive husband that helps me so that I can do YouTube and my work. And anyways, yeah. So that's amazing. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah, but I only have two kids. I only uh, two. I only have two. Five and sorry, six and two. seven. I heard once you had two, you might as well have five. It's busy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm 40 now. And um yeah. I will You're say good. me I'm, too. I, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I started late. So maybe if I would have started earlier, I would maybe have had more kids, but I started in my 30s and I wanted both of them before 35 because you're apparently like a geriatric mom after 35. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> I'm 40 and my youngest is two. So yeah, I had a very geriatric, but it was a beautiful pregnancy and I had a home oh, birth. Wow. So oh, wow. Cool. oh man. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad we're talking about this because it's stuff I don't usually talk about, but I had two C-sections within uh, a year and a half of each other and that was not wow. fun. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is tough. Yeah. I, they, there was no VBAC for me. And, uh, and my daughter was upside down. So definitely no VBAC, no VBAC in sight. They're like, you need to wait three years. I'm like, but that doesn't work with my timeline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A good midwife would have said, I'll deliver your VBAC upside down, baby. Oh man. Yeah. No, there's, ah, uh, yeah, no, I'm in South America. And um, I should have said a very experienced one would consider it is what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't even I don't, I don't know anybody out there to freak out on me right now. Do not freak out people. But no, like but my my midwife had um experience delivering um what is it called when they're upside down? Breach. Twin. Oh yeah, breach. And, oh, and wow. so it's completely possible. There's a lot of positioning, there's a lot of things that can happen. Um yeah. But it, you know, it depends on their experience and their comfort. And I know a lot of midwives will not deliver breech babies or twins. <laughs> oh, wow. I yeah. just happened to hit the jackpot with mine. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so happy you got to deliver at home. That wasn't ever in the cards for me. Um, on baby number one, I never went into labor. And so we did all these processes to get me into labor, which ended up in an emergency C-section. And then I got pregnant. I think they told, like warned me, like, don't get pregnant. Maybe I'm wrong. I Maybe somebody warned me, like, don't have your, don't get pregnant within a year. I don't know what they said. But anyways, I was pregnant within a year. <laughs> yeah, they do say that. So your body can get those nutrients back and, and yeah. build back up. Sure. That totally makes, it's a very nutrient taxing thing to sure. have babies, but it's also, yeah. you know, our bodies were made for it. So sure. That's my that's, first yeah. two are 15, 16 months apart. Oh, okay. I think that's, I think Jacob and Brianna are 21 months apart, I think, or around there, somewhere around there. Yeah. Jacob and then eight soon and Brianna just turned six. The second two are two and a half years apart, three years oh, apart. Okay. And, um, I don't know which way I'd pick it having mm. two babies or getting done with the baby and then having another baby. <laughs> yeah. And, and then when you have them back to back, the, the, the first one isn't quite old enough to hurt the second one that hard. Mm. Or when you have like a three-year-old running around who just doesn't mm. get it, you have to protect the baby from the three-year-old. Oh, wow. I never even thought of that. A level of exhaustion. But oh, I bet. Anyway, I'm sorry for rambling no. about birthing. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, and I'm probably going to keep this in here and we'll see how many people actually watch. <laughs> but I just want to say, because it's actually a, a very good point, because after I had uh, my kids back to back, um, 
you know, my second, my second child, my first child was the sleeper and the second one wasn't. And I had many nights that I was awake late and I was eating terribly. I was eating like oatmeal or whatever, you know, in the middle of the night eating stuff that is not the best. Right. And, um, you're just trying body, to get that energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Cause I'm nursing. Um, and I don't know if you experienced that, but I was in a very bad place, but I, like when I started the carnivore diet, like physically and, and I, I say mentally also, and I, I don't like to worry people when I say mentally, but, um, I believe it is due to the fact of having two babies back to back, uh, nursing my daughter for th three years and four months and my sleep got ruined. My hormones got ruined. And, uh, I felt like a different person within three days of doing carnivore. <laughs> Oh, wow. We yeah. After we go into it. It was yeah. before going carnivore. I had to do something. I was yeah. having terror. I was having hallucination. Aww. I couldn't <gasps> drive. I couldn't sleep. I have SIRS. What SIRS? So, what SIRS? Chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Uh, it's basically where you have some kind of event that puts your body into inflammation and your body doesn't know how to turn it off. So it starts attacking oh, yeah. itself. Oh, wow. It's and like autoimmune very autoimmune -y. Um, and okay. then you start becoming sensitive to everything. Like I was sick oh, every no. time I ate because when you're inflamed, your gut lining opens up, your brain opens up, you've got fl food flowing right into your bloodstream. It's flowing right into your brain oh. and it's acting like a toxin. You're now sensitive to moldy buildings. You're sensitive to the detergent in the laundry aisle. I mean, it, you become sensitive to everything and you have no idea where you're taking a hit from and you're taking hits everywhere. So the oh, carnivore wow. diet kind of cleared out the environment of, okay, it's not these, my food is good. I can eat food now. Okay. Um, and now let's figure out what else is causing me issues and how can we calm this inflammation down and heal. And yes, yeah, so that's part of my story too, is okay. the oh, wow. being not being not well and needing right. to do something to, right. to be able to be a mom. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm so glad we're talking about this. This is not the direction I was planning on going because you are the biggest loser woman. Uh, but I'm happy we're talking about this. I really am because man, to be a mom, you have to be there for your kids. And if you feel like crap all the time, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't go up and down the stairs to do the laundry and people looked at me and they were like, why can't you just do the laundry? And I'm like, it makes me physically ill to go oh, up and wow. down the stairs. It makes me physically ill to carry a laundry basket. I mean, I couldn't hardly drive. My arms and legs were going numb. And oh. when I would like eat, I was drinking um, some of the, the electrolytes. I'm not going to say the brand because they're absolutely fabulous. And when I told them this was happening, they gave me a full refund and said, please donate the product to other moms. Oh, wow. um, but I, there's a couple brands that I react to where my arms and legs go numb when I drink it. Oh my goodness. It, because they, it has citric acid, which is a, mm. a byproduct of mold maybe. And and then it has maltodextrin and who knows what mm. other natural flavors. I'm so sensitive. I, oh. I understand. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I get it. And, oh and I don't know if you ever had this, but every single time I drove, if I drove for more than 10 minutes, I started falling, not falling asleep. I literally mm. wouldn't fall asleep because clearly I'm not going to Fall asleep yeah. while I'm driving my kids around, but I get yeah. so tired. I would need to pull over and shake so that I could oh, keep driving. Wow. And I had no idea that it was so, so much inflammation that the air was stopping. To so I got my driver's license, which was really a learner's permit at 27. <laughs> I mean, it was like 25, 24. Very funny story about that. Um, and then I only drove a car for a year and then I uh, moved to Columbia and we just use Ubers and public transport. So no, I don't have that experience with driving because I haven't driven so much in the 40 years of life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> it must be amazing to not have to drive. Can uh, you just sit amazing. back and like catch up on your emails instead of having to like focus on the road? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Somebody else is driving you. And uh, we won't get into like the economy here, but your Uber is very expensive in Chicago and very cheap here. Like oh, nice. Me and my mom, we I was taking her shopping because we were getting prepared for an event and I was getting her all styled. Um, and I think one Uber ride was like $30 that would cost me $5 here. So mm -hmm. anyways, so no, I don't drive, but that's crazy. That sounds terrifying that you're. Yeah. And, and uh, oftentimes to 
to afford being a stay-at-home mom, my husband would yeah. take like a project and he would have to travel for that. Mm. So I am the sole provider here for four kids. So you can't right. not be able to drive. You can't be sitting there having terror. You can't, right. you know, you can't not do laundry. It's a- right. Totally. <laughs> so so um, I'm grateful to have found a way to eat to help me heal. That's awesome. And we'll get into some specifics on that in a second. But I want to interject that I feel that like in this day and age, maybe there's some weird stigma about being a stay at home mom when that is such an important job. You need that person raising the family, taking care of the home. And I don't know who pushes this. So it's such an important job. And if that's all I could do and YouTube, that would be amazing. (laughs) So I was a working mom for the first. I'm, I'm actually a divorcee. And in my first marriage, I was the breadwinner and the insurance provider. I had to work and I had to work. And I, 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 you know, this is like every, I mean, this is all of America, maybe all of the world. Moms have to work just to pay the bills. And it's not Mm -hmm. even like a thriving thing. It's not a selfish thing. It's not a greedy thing. It's a, totally. we can't pay for our house unless we both work. Right. And, um, I, I, that marriage wasn't for me. We can mm-hmm. go down that road, but we won't. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I was Not very now. fortunate to find a fantastic provider who is willing to take on second jobs. And, you know, it oh, still wow. is a sacrifice. Sure. Uh, sure. But I do feel like. So this is not a knock on working moms because I was one. And I think that that's most of the world. It's a necessity. But to be able to nurture those kids and just give them that inner security that I am there for you and you are loved and I get to watch you grow. And it's, it is such a blessing. Absolutely. It's super hard, but it is such a blessing. Oh, I, it's really hard, especially if you have four and you're at home and your husband's elsewhere. Uh, Mm -hmm. that's very hard. I visited the States with my kids without my husband and it was terrible. (laughs) Sorry, mom. I love you, but it was the worst. Now I've already told her this. It was so hard because I was trying to be on vacation and trying to take care of my kids by myself. Long story short, before I visited, after I bought the plane tickets, my mom broke her arm. So I didn't want to reverse my vacation, but it was kind of like a vacation where I was kind of working at the same time, but I'm trying to work and make sure my mom doesn't get her arm rebroken by two young kids. (laughs) Oh man, you were so, hoping for her help. Yeah, but that was the whole she plan. Had an accident, right? Yeah, exactly. And um, so, long story short, uh, yeah, it was very hard without my husband trying to do all that and navigate traveling. And so, I understand how that can be. And and I work, and I'm blessed, I guess you could say, or I've arranged my life to be able to work from home. Which, by the way, sometimes is very hard. <laughs> Also, that is not a blessing. You're <laughs> double working. It is yeah. a blessing. You get to yeah. be there, but it's also yeah. another sacrifice. Whether sure. you're a working mom or a stay at home mom or a working yeah. dad, stay at home dad, there's a sacrifice somewhere. Sure. And all we can do is the best for our families. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Completely. Can we talk about the biggest loser? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring it on. I love talking about this. Oh, you do? Okay, I started perfect. a series on my channel, Adrian yeah. K. Gledhill, interviewing yeah. different alumni because I want to know, like, what was oh. your experience? And then I want also to know, for me, that wasn't the ticket. And here's the damage that it caused. But right. what about you? How did it go for you? Because people love that show. They follow the show to this day, even if they found something that worked for them. I've heard people say in the back of my mind, I still wish I could just go on The Biggest Loser. Are we sure I have to go through all this or could I just have whatever magic you guys had? So I asked them, was it magic for you and what worked yeah. long term? And so I'm getting lots of people's opinions. And some oh, of them are okay. carnivore, some people are keto, some people are just like anti-processed foods. It's a whole spectrum of what's okay. working for people, but not a single one so far has said, yeah, 900 calories a day and 10 hours of cardio. That's what works for me. Oh my gosh. That, <laughs> that's like, that's like impossible. Like, yeah. So that's interesting. Like I said, I don't know if I said it while we're recording or not, but I've never seen the show. I just hated the name. <laughs> I thought it was very like, what a terrible name. You're literally just making fun of fat people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And like, I mean, we'll go into, we had talked yeah. about how I met the producers. Yeah. If you look at the different shows that they've done, 
all almost all of their shows are to motivate people to change their lives. Okay. So the producers have a very good intent, okay. but they also have to produce TV and they right. also have corporate, they also have networks that they have to appease. And right. so it has to be very clickbaity, you know, sure. it has to be good TV. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and so you got the combo there. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So how? I mean, just like, just like the. Um, sorry for cutting you off. No, no, no. The, um, you you never saw it, but they had these temptations, where if you ate so many donuts, you got a, some kind of um advantage later on in the game. If you would <laughs> donuts. I mean, that is going out and saying that people are overweight because they eat donuts. I've struggled for the past eighteen years, and I've maybe consumed four donuts in 18 years. So to say that people are struggling with their weight because they're sitting at home eating donuts might be true for some people, but I just, I don't know. I think a lot of people are out there drinking almond milk and um, keto bread and you know what I mean? Right. Like they think yeah. that they're eating, they're eating the low fat dressing that's actually seed oil you know, they're, they're eating the things they think are healthy that aren't healthy. But sure. anyway, yeah. What are no, your questions pretty... about the show though? How, so how old were you when you went on the show? 22. Oh, wow. So like 18 years ago. Oh yeah. You did say 18 years I'm a ago. Wow. I was a baby on the show. And wow. if you watch it, cause you can search, um, season three, biggest loser on YouTube. Most of the season is, I'm not going to say it's like a, it's clearly a pirated version. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really legit funny. i don't think they're monetized <laughs> uh, but you can watch it there and it's cringy oh oh man because i was ago. 22 oh, kind of arrogant I was 22. but also very emotional and mm -hmm. thought that everything should be fair so there's tears and arrogance <laughs> there's a com there was a commercial of me stomping and saying it's not fair i want to oh go gosh. home I mean, so if I could redo it, it'd be a totally different show today. But they wouldn't want you uh, a different way, I don't think, because you have to be like that drama. <laughs> yeah, I made good TV. I mean, I yeah. said, yeah, sure, these girls have lost weight, but they still have big butts. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we're so young, when we're 20, we got like a little chip on our shoulder. You know what I mean? You have to like learn some empathy at some point. Get that chip off the shoulder. <laughs> Oh, God. So you could you wouldn't hear me say someone has a big butt today unless it was like hey do you see that badonka donk you know in a yeah, positive totally way because <laughs> there's a lot of big butted girls around here <laughs> i know now it's cool i don't really get it but now it's uh, cool i guess now it's cool um that so speaking of which like all of, like not all of my weight but i'm very heavy down there so like i look yeah. skinny up here but you haven't seen the <laughs> mm -hmm. the bottom yeah. part <laughs> yeah that's where i need to lose is in the stomach to the knees <laughs> so we look great from up here <laughs> same <laughs> products of the carnivore diet no i'm just joking I'm i mean joking. i have seen some pictures of me i'm proud of where i've come sure but I, I i feel like i have some work to do still and that's okay i i recently had a dexa scan at hack your health and yeah. it said i was 27 percent body fat which was down from 29 the year before and okay. i feel like that's good like i'm barely in the green yes right. and yes. i'm going the right direction right and i didn't hardly lose any muscle according to the scan um so right. wins for the diet sure but yeah, but absolutely. Healthy can be 20 to 22. You know, there's yeah, there's some fat I mean, lost. I think I need to lose a, like if I could lose 30 more pounds, I would be back to my pre-baby weight. And oh, I've never been that small. No? This is my smallest. Oh wow. So uh disclosure, I'm a size 16. My husband's oh, like, you, wow. you don't look fat though. And that's just kind of how I am. Okay, that's great. That's great. Oh, yeah, oh maybe I know. Guys, oh, that's awesome. Um, so, but my husband, he, I guess, he, first of all, he doesn't care. He didn't care when I was 220 or 225 pounds. I think I got, that was my fattest. He didn't care when I was 209 pounds when I started the carnivore diet. He hated that I complained about all the aches and pains. And for him, the fact that I don't have any more, I mean, I whatever. 
it's not going to say I don't have any more, but I don't complain about it. Like that's the bigger thing is that. And, um, the fact that I'm here talking to you on a YouTube channel, which is something I always like for many years wanted to do, but didn't have the confidence to do it because I didn't like how I looked or whatever. And now I'm here doing it. So, Hey, let's talk about that. It's more important than how big your butt is. <laughs> My husband, uh, he adores, adored me when I was 202 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest he ever saw me because he okay. came in later on in the journey. Okay. Uh, but he's like, as long as you put out, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> should we keep this in here? We're going to keep this in the hair. This is the funnest. hundred percent. You should keep it in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Husbands are great. When you've got the right one, it's great. <laughs> yes. Yes. He's like, as long as you feel confident enough to get it on, you're good. We're, we're, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, when you feel terrible and you're not sleeping and your gut's upset, you're, you're, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want, you're just exhausted and it's not fun. And so that is not my story. Unfortunately, my hormones have taken a dive after a year of carnivore and oh. I'm a year and a half in now. And okay. I think that's more to do with my SIRS than to do with carnivore because yeah. Like cutting the green beans didn't cause me a hormone issue. Sure. And before this, I was very, very low carb. So okay. it's not the green beans. No. My body okay. isn't like, hey, give me some nutrientless, <laughs> anti nutrient, uh, you know, uh, yeah. fiber filled fart beans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, broccoli's that for me. Okay, we we've segued. So, um, how did you get onto? Uh, how did you get onto the Biggest Loser? How did that even happen? So I was overweight my whole life, and okay. I when I got into high school, I started working out really hard and restricting as much as I could. And I wish I would have known about nutrition, what I know now, because mm -hmm. I was still trying to drink like orange juice in moderation, but I would take one sip and it was on. I would drink like mm -hmm. the whole pitcher or mm -hmm. I'd have one piece of bread and the whole loaf would be gone. And I'm like, man, there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. No, that is addicting food. Anyway, mm -hmm. I digress again. Um, so then I went to college and I gained quite a bit of weight, like 60 pounds in a year. And I was just feeling huge and miserable. And that's when the biggest loser started coming on. I was on season mm -hmm. three okay. and this was my fourth year of college. So while I was in college, the show became big mm -hmm. and I'd never seen the show before, but I had a dream that I was going to be on it. And it was so wow. vivid. It was so vivid. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. ever had a vivid dream totally. that came true. Yep. Uh, recently, my best friend, well, a few years ago, had a vivid dream. I was having a little boy and I was like, no, we're done having kids. And then a few months later, I was pregnant with a little boy. Oh, so wow. vivid dream. So sure. I go to the Mall of America because I'm from Minnesota and ah, um, okay. I auditioned and they, um, I didn't hear anything. I didn't get picked from there. But okay. so I, I reached out to my network because we had Facebook. We didn't have yeah. smartphones with cameras yet, but we had Facebook on the computer. and I said, does anybody have a camera I could borrow? I need to make a video because I'm going to be on The Biggest Loser. And uh, some <laughs> friend from high school's mom had one in the garage and it was a VHS uh, huge thing that you put on your shoulder and the battery was dead. So you had to plug it in and we filmed <laughs> different things like with an extension cord. Like I did a, um, a snow angel in a bikini and I'm weighing 230 pounds. Like this isn't super cute. Um, and I did a scene <laughs> of crying and saying, I've been fat my whole life and I hate myself. You know, there was like five scenes. So then we played the VHS on the TV and we used that recorder to put the things in the order that I wanted. So this is super low quality. And then I had to mail the VHS in. Oh, and then wow. I get this random email. It was like stacyjohnson at gmail.com. And it said, hey, you've been selected as the next stage of the auditions for The Biggest Loser. I'm like, is this real? But how would they know? Yeah. So I emailed stacy at gmail.com back. <laughs> and it turned out to be true. And they flew me to California wow. and we get there and we're, it's so exciting. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure. Am I going to get ax murdered? Is this real? Or is this, is this it? This is my dream come true. I'm finally not going to be big because yeah. I've been big my whole life. 
And uh, it turned out it was real. We were put in a hotel. You could order whatever food you want. They would send it to your room. You had to stay there for like a week. We went to the doctor's office, had to get all this testing done. I don't know if you know what a bod pod is, but it's like an egg that you go in. It tells your body comp. We did the DEXA scan. We did a float scan. We did a... a, um, where you like go into a hot tub and based on your floating, they can tell how much of your body is fat versus muscle. Oh, wow. Okay. We did all these exams. So he, he was very thorough, the doctor. And yeah. we did like the cardiovascular where you run with the the stickies on you to see if your heart works okay to do the vigorous exercise of the show. And then we find, then we get to go to the ranch and start filming. And it's this ranch called the Hummingbird nest ranch and it's in simi valley california i don't i'm probably saying that wrong semi valley simi valley you guys know which one it is and (laughs) it's this beautiful ranch it's gorgeous and i'm like oh my gosh and i find out i'm representing north dakota and because that's where i went to college oh okay and they needed someone for so great that i was going to college there because otherwise you know if i was in new york i probably wouldn't have got picked because i bet five million people from new york auditioned where maybe not as many people from North Dakota auditioned. So I'm just so grateful. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's on. The minute that we did our way in, because we did it in the hotel. Yeah. I started push-ups and walking in place in my hotel room. I started restricting my food. I didn't even know what I was doing yet, but I was like, I just know I gotta <laughs> move and restrict. And then we go to the ranch and I find out 36 people are going home. And Aww. I'm one of them. And whoever loses the most weight at home is going to get to come back on. So we get a doctor, a nutritionist, a psychologist, and I can tell you exactly what they told me to do. And I'm going to tell you guys, it's pretty much what your doctors are telling you to do. I was told 1,274 calories, break it into three meals, two snacks. And I was told to work out an hour and a half in the morning and an hour at night, spread it out and walk in between. And this magic formula, I beat everybody at home and everybody on the ranch. And so oh, I won wow. my spot back on. Oh, and wow. For many How much years, did you lose? I and don't that... remember. I'm going to go with 50 pounds. Oh, I think wow. Might have been, might have, yeah, probably about 50 pounds to get back onto the ranch. And I remember thinking I was so cool. I worked so hard. And now that I'm 40 and struggling with perimenopause, I'm like, you had the best day. I had the best metabolism out of everybody. That's why right. I beat them. Yeah. Because exactly. I was 22. Right. And I had the best metabolism versus like the poor 55 year old guy had no chance <laughs> against me. And the other guy that went was young too. So they took one girl and one guy and we were okay. both super young. Um, so sure. being that we had lost so much, they did not like us and they got rid of us as soon as they could. But I made it to the makeover. I got to do three different competitions there wasn't much left when Jaron and I left. Like we oh, were the okay. last two people voted out before the finale. So, but, we, so we, we made it a while. The idea like to lose the most weight, but since you're so young and you're doing it so easily, they want you out. They want to, they want somebody else to win or something. Um. So the people on the ranch. So here's some behind the scenes. This is what okay. your viewers want right here. Okay. So as an at home, I had all those tools and we had yeah. support calls every week. I was working through things. I, I remember doing tons of journaling. Um, mm. I had people to talk to. There was, you know, because there was 36 of us. We had like a friendship group. We became really tight. We're tight to this day. I know many awesome. of them. I still talk to them. I just went on a cruise with one of them. Um, we became really tight. We had it. And we also got to be home with our families while we were doing this. And because we broke things up. I don't think any of us got injured, but I get on the ranch and I find out that they only had the trainer there a couple days a week for a couple hours while the cameras were there. They Mm. were by themselves and then they weren't allowed to talk to their families and a week on the ranch is not the same as a week in real life. It could be two. It could be three weeks of filming to make one episode. So when you see 12 episodes, Mm -hmm. they could have been gone for five months. I don't remember how long it was. It was super long that they were not allowed to talk to their family. Oh, wow. So they're so upset because here comes me and Jaron, Mm -hmm. tan, young, blonde, beat (laughs) them, was with our family the whole time, not Mm -hmm. injured, right? glowing, happy, and they are... (laughs) 
they are starving themselves, missing their family, injured. That's you know, so, so you at home got the better help. Big time. We had oh, wow. way, we had way more support. And honestly, the type of support you probably really kind of need to lose weight. Okay. You need to work on the space in between here. You need to work on your nutrition. I think we can get a lot of that through YouTube these days. And there's sure. a bunch of support groups or right. friendship. You meet people online, sure. you meet them on Instagram. Um, so we, as a community, I feel like a lot of people know you have to have more of a well-rounded than just doing it by yourself. I mean, we all try. Right. For a period, we all go, yeah, I got this. And then sure. and then after a little lull, we go, wait a second, what else is there? You know? Yeah, exactly. So what was it like for you then when you got back to the ranch? Was it, it terrible? It was really, really hard because oh, I no longer had anybody. The trainers kind of hated us because oh, we no. had lost that weight without them. Mm. And their job is to look, you know, judge. Bob Harper is supposed to be the best weight loss guy in the nation. <laughs> you know, he's supposed to be the top dog. When you watch even later on, I was just, as I'm interviewing people, I'm watching their, their um episodes before I interview them. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's like, oh my gosh, I want Bob. He's going to save my life. He knows he's magic, you know? Yeah. Oh, he's a pretty dude. He's an actor. He, he helped. I don't know what his experience exactly was before, but Jillian Michaels has come out and said prior to the show, she was helping people lose 10 to 15, 5, 10 pounds. He, she was a celebrity trainer. She wasn't a doctor. Mm -hmm. And even at, let's say they had previously helped people lose hundreds of pounds. Yeah. They're still not a nutritionist, a doctor, you know, mm -hmm. like they are basically, they know how to exercise, but that's okay. only one piece of the whole puzzle. Right. And yeah, you look exactly. at the exercise they're making them do. That made them injured. You don't take a 400-pound man and go, hey, run five miles a day. <laughs> you know, you need to be gentle. It's like it's actually right. more. They make it look like that working out is so important. Like that's 90% and the food is 5%. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even add up. But No, it's fine. Um, yeah. um, but in reality, the eating is 90%. 95 percent and the food or in the exercise is five percent that's right. like maintaining your muscle and longevity right but really it's what you put in your mouth sure i know that now unfortunately i wish i knew that when i was 14 but <laughs> oh man oh man i i was like a fat little kid but then as a teen and in my 20s and 30s there was like maybe chubby periods but i wasn't very Yes, I thought I was, but I wasn't because now that I've been obese and then like now working my way down from obesity, I don't think I am anymore, but I'm still, my friends would probably say I'm a whole lot of woman. <laughs> but my point is that at 14, 20, 30, um, my menstrual cycle was destroying my life. Well, I, I say that really, I try not to over exaggerate things, but if you have endometriosis, which, which is what I think I had, it can be very rough. And that was my, that was my, uh, my success from eating crap, <laughs> from eating a very bad diet. That's what I gained from it. Maybe not a ton of weight, but, um, a lot of problems. Could you Hormone imagine? Distress. Yeah. Could you imagine like, I don't know the SIRS thing, but maybe it's similar, but like you, you dread when your period's coming because, uh, first the back pain starts, the neck pain starts, then it transfers to the head. Your period hasn't even started yet. And then you're, then you're writhing on the floor. <laughs> you're like huddled in a ball on your floor. And this is what I thought this was normal, by the way. I thought it was just like something. It's normal, but it's not healthy. Yeah, <laughs> it's normal. Like it's common, it's but common. it's not healthy. No. So like I'm saying, I wish I knew this at 14 because I don't think that I would have gone through all that mm -hmm. at all. So yeah, maybe I wasn't the the fat teenager i was the chubby kid i'll send you a photo later but um yeah when people they're like that's you <laughs> this chubby little kid yeah yeah i was totally chubby i'm from chicago what do we eat in chicago hot dogs with lots of mustard and french fries lots of french fries and ketchup <laughs> that's what we eat in chicago <laughs> do you know tony primal health found primal foundations no i'll find you have though. to go look him up and you'll yeah. you'll love him and he is a Italian-American. And he oh, was just okay. telling a story on my channel 
Tony Primal Foundations. He's I'll find him. And he struggled he's with tough. food because of it. You know, he's I tough. mean, these foods are so addictive. You can be oh, yeah. like the most fit guy ever and still have issues with these addictive foods. Sure. You know, but my yeah. husband yeah. just started eating a little bit more meat and yeah. he cut some pop. He started drinking like sugar free pop instead. Yeah. And he lost 30 pounds. Oh, I hate men. <laughs> I know. And then, and then he went back to his standard American ways. Yeah. And he'll he'll eat out a lot because he he's not bringing lunch to work, and he hasn't gained his weight back. I think he actually lost five more pounds. He's so annoying. I love oh, him. <laughs> I understand. My husband is very thin, and he doesn't get fat or skinny. But he, when I was out in in the U.S. visiting my family, uh, he did a carnivore, very strict. He's like, I was just, I'm not cooking anything. I'm cooking eggs and meat. And so then. He didn't lose weight or gain weight that I could tell because he just stays the same. But he now notices if he eats sugar, inflammation in his body that he didn't notice before. And mm -hmm. it like instantly inflammation if he eats like something very sugary. So I'm glad for him because at least now he knows what mm -hmm. he has reactions to. Or bananas. He was talking about bananas today. I forgot exactly what he said, but bananas create some sort of inflammation also. I think like I'm going to stick to how I eat and I very much follow like the Ken, I call it the Ken Berry prescription. <laughs> I like to follow the Ken Berry prescription, but um, maybe once in a while I'll eat something off. But now I know what will make me feel terrible, what won't make me feel terrible, but I'm mainly I eat this way. What did I eat today? Salmon with some lime and eggs. That's what I've eaten all day today. And I feel fine. And here we are. Here we are. And I, by I the way, I, oh, I hate sardines. That triggers people so bad. No, I sardines didn't make me feel magical. So, oh, that's what that's what chicken liver does to me. Or liver and and organs make me feel magical, like a uh, like <sighs> superwoman. So you I'll let you have them, thing. just like you'll probably let me have the sardines. I have like two or three cans of sardines in there for a month, and I'm like, I will eat these. Can I tell you what happened after The Biggest Loser? Tell me what happened. So wait, you did it. You lost. You were like in second place and you went home. Yeah, there was, uh, I was the second to last person to be voted off. Jaren was the last, my partner. And oh. uh, I went home and I immediately started struggling. Immediately. Oh, I was like the feel of failure. Yeah. It was so many things. But part of it later on I found is my metabolism was dead. Mm. For sure. And there's just no maintaining. Oh, man. You know, walking seven hours a day, there's just no maintaining. Because when I went on no. the ranch, I kind of converted to their ways, which didn't make any sense. It's just I kind of felt the pressure to do it. And okay. then also um, the the cameras, we had a production schedule we had to follow. It was no difficult worries. to keep my routine with the produc production schedule. Like we would film at night all the time because of the temperature mm, okay. and because of the lighting. So I conformed to that. So I get home and I gain a hundred pounds all of your yeah so so i had lost 66 what? and i gained 100 so you went there having already lost 50 pounds then you only mm -hmm. lost 16 while you were there which is mm -hmm. crazy because you probably that's crazy uh i understand why you're also like super stressing your body mm -hmm. doing this rigorous thing. by the time i got there i was in the 170s so it was slower to lose it's slower to lose after that it's you true. know yeah. and i started out one of the smaller girls um okay. at 227 ish or 230 something like that so it's, i have stick points my stick points are 265 225 230 yeah. um 175 oh wow interesting those Is are my stuff right points. Now? are you at, so now are you i range yeah. between 155 and 165 yeah, I saw a picture of you with Eric Berg on your Facebook, and you looked very skinny. I'm like, oh, look at this girl. She's so she's so thin. Thank you. <laughs> and beautiful. I felt really good that day. Aww. Yeah, but I'm working on hormone healing still, so there is still okay. fluctuation. But I heard you fluctuate the same 10 pounds in maintenance. That's what oh, maintenance okay. is, I've heard, but I don't know. Okay. I mean, ultimately, my goal would be probably 135, 145. Sure. I don't know. Thank I've you. never been that small, but I feel like that would no? be a better body composition. Oh, no, nope. high school 165, biggest loser 165, gastric bypass. We skipped that oh. section of my life. Oh, 165. Wow. Um, so now 155 to 165. And there's been periods where I was a little bit lower, but how tall that's are where you? I am most of the time. 5'4. Oh, we're and, the same and, height. We're the same and, height. Um, and 27% and 
body fat. So that's a so even though some people would call that really heavy, yeah, I have a lot of muscle. I really do. So I believe it. Good for you. There you go. Yeah. So I get a so I I gained the hundred pounds and that's I struggle crazy. to run and restrict and do the same things and it's not working anymore. Right. And I'm trying and. Um, I, I, when in pregnancy, I got up to three 30 and that's when I was like, I don't even care. I will run marathons before continuing this. I can't live like this. I can't even get in and out of bed. Thirty. Wow. Wow. That wow, was wow. in pregnancy. Yeah. I got okay. up to three 30 in pregnancy. And that's when I was like, I've had enough. I don't care if I do nothing for the rest of my life, but run, I can't be 330 pounds. This hurts. And I feel right. miserable and this is awful. And I'm so depressed. And so I ran my way down to 230, my stuck point. And you ran a hundred pounds off because that's what you yeah. learned on the biggest loser. Yep. Ran and restricted, low oh, fat, okay. low calorie, oh. portion everything out. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and five meals a day again. We're back to three meals and two snacks again. And everything's portioned out. And I'm running, 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 literally running marathon, half marathon even at 260, which I don't think if you weigh that much, you should be running half marathons. No. That's not great no. for your joints. You, you right. should wait. You should walk. I mean, I walk right. now. Um, so then I asked people in the Biggest Loser community, because we have a community, and I saw people gaining it and then losing it. And I said, how did you? Yeah. And the secret was surgery. <gasps> oh. Okay. So I had gastric oh. bypass. And I, I haven't got there yet, but I would guess a lot of people in the community now are on the shots. And I'm not judging. I had surgery. Mm -hmm. I totally mm -hmm. get it. You tried you tried everything that you knew of. Mm -hmm. They probably don't know about carnivore. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you tried everything you knew of and it wasn't mm -hmm. working because it doesn't work to eat 1,200 calories. Your body goes into starvation. It doesn't work. It will work for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And then your body goes, what? Stop. Right. And all of a sudden you're moody, you're tired, you're having cravings, you think that it's you, you're just like ravenous. It doesn't matter what you do, you keep fighting it. And I see this cycle with my friends. That's part of the reason I started the channel because I'm hoping that they see like, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like that. You can be right. full, you can eat <laughs> meat, be full. You don't have to be ravenous. You don't have to eat low fat. In fact, please stop. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's so then terrible. I had the surgery and I was sick ever since I had the surgery. Oh no, that's horrible. And that's when mm -hmm. all the, the spear stuff started, all that stuff happened. Yeah, glycemia, oh, no. anemia, my autoimmune started flaring, my inflammation. I'm chronically fatigued now. I can't keep ahead of it. I'm getting infusions. I'm eating green beans and chicken. I'm still having low blood sugar. It just doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, so then I spent the next 10 years after my surgery trying to figure out like, how do I get rid of this hypoglycemia? Cause I literally can't go to the grocery store. I can barely leave my house or my blood sugar might drop. Oh, I was oh, at the mall no. of America with my kids. I don't even know what I ate, but it definitely wasn't sugar. I never ate sugar. It was not mm -hmm. sugar. It was the stress of being at the mall with kids and my blood sugar drops. You and know, how do you handle that? Birthday party. Every birthday party, my blood sugar would drop. Not because I ate cake, but the stress of throwing the birthday party. So, mm -hmm. um, I, and then, like I said, I ended up with long haulers. And so I just perpetually get sick and nothing's getting better mm -hmm. until someone said, hey, you should try car My dad said, you should try Ooh. carnivore. Oh, wow. Were you already trying to do like a ketogenic sort of diet? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. To keep the to keep the hypoglycemia at bay, I was incredibly low carb, okay. like incredibly low carb. Oh, and wow. I just kept I kept eliminating more and more. You know, I figured out nuts are inflammatory and I have I know I have autoimmune. I don't know how to fix it, but I know that nuts aren't great for people with autoimmune. Mm -hmm. Dairy's not great for people with autoimmune. Chemicals aren't great. Every day I was finding a new thing that's hard for people with autoimmune. And eventually I got down to basically green beans and chicken. And oh no. Chicken, chicken is like I know. I do eat it sometimes, but I it, don't even very, eat that anymore. Oh good. Chicken liver. Do chicken liver. Chicken liver. <laughs> Here's the funny part. I got down because of the whole 2020 yeah. thing. I started yeah. self-sufficiency. And What's so self I started a quail farm. Where you like <laughs> oh self-sufficiency okay i get it like homesteading okay so i started a quail farm so i had 600 quail 20 <laughs> rabbits and we did 100 meat chickens twice 
Oh, and wow. so here I think like, look at me, I'm stocking up all this food. And then I go carnivore and I realize that is not food we can live on. There's no, no. fat. Right. right. And we couldn't find a way to feed them without grain because I live in basically mm. Alaska. <laughs> yeah, in Minnesota for sure. That's terrible. It's so cold and it's winter nine months of the year here. And so we can't just have them out eating grass because you can't right. even see the grass most of the year and so, <laughs> so yeah so the birds got rehomed the oh, rabbits okay. got rehomed the chickens got freezered <laughs> there you go <laughs> the yeah freezer <laughs> so we don't oh do man anymore. okay uh it was, it was a good try thanks for trying <laughs> <laughs> and the quail effort. eggs were so cute oh yeah I, I think I bought some quail eggs. They're they're little little ones, right? Those are great mm -hmm. boiled. Those are great yes, boiled. they're delicious boiled. Yeah, totally. Um, so your dad said do carnivore. So you're struggling. So you did 18 years ago. You do the stupid biggest loser. You destroy your body. Uh, then you gain 100 pounds. Then you have kids. Then you have gastric bypass. So a year ago, your dad's like, no, you need to do carnivore. Year and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then and, also that last home birth, the midwife had mm -hmm. said, eat all the red meat you can. Because I told her, hey, will you even take me? This is my, this would be my fifth pregnancy, actually. And oh, the first okay. one, he was faced the wrong way and it was traumatic. The second one, I had preeclampsia. The third one ended at 20 weeks. Oh, the so fourth sorry. one, sorry, I didn't mean to just make light of it. It's, no. we no. are okay. 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 Uh, if you're fine, I'm fine. I just don't want to. It's heartbreaking. Worry. And yeah. and we were told that it was just a fluke. Mm -hmm. And now, now I'm like, no, I had autoimmune illness. You probably mm -hmm. should have looked into that and they didn't. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, so I tell my midwife I've had all these and all my kids have had colic and I've never had milk. And I'm like, will you still take oh, me wow. as a client? I've had mm -hmm. all these issues. And she's like, yeah, we got this preeclampsia. Uh -huh. She said, you need more salt. Like, oh, no wow. Way. Cause that's the opposite of what we were told. Oh, Anemia. Crazy. She said, you need eggs, butter, and red meat. You, you know? got a good one. You got a good one. Yes. Um, face the wrong way. We need to be doing some, we need to keep those hips moving and open and walking. And she gave me, I, it was the healthiest pregnancy I had had under her guidance until I caught the bad virus. Oh, anyway, so she virus. was the one that was telling me about all these things. And I'm like, and she goes, this makes the best blood. And so it started, mm -hmm. the wheel started turning in my mm -hmm. head that if this is what I should be eating while I'm pregnant, maybe I should be eating this when I'm not. Right. right? Yeah. Instead of the chicken, maybe I should be eating more red meat. And then, mm -hmm. then the autoimmune got bad. And then my dad, my dad lost 60 pounds on no That's brains, awesome. no sugar, Vinny Tortelich, I think his name is Vinny. And so he was the one that was like, you got to give this a try. And here we are. The oh, smallest wow. I've ever been. It's been wow. maintaining it. I get to be full. And that's huge for my addictive foodness. Mm -hmm. You know, healing things instead of just like, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I just want a pill because I'm exhausted from healing. <laughs> it's nice okay. to try to heal. Sure. You know? In hopes that yeah. I don't have to be on medicine for the rest of my life. Right. Yeah, I understand that for sure. I um, have a thyroid condition. It might be Hashimoto's. I have to test that out. I've had it since after my son was born. And I refuse to take the medications because I thought it would. Uh, and I don't know if I'm correct or not correct in that. <laughs> but I wanted to stay off the medication. So here I am. Don't you feel like if you take something, then your body goes, oh, I don't have to produce that anymore. Right. Exactly. I don't even that have to thought. try. That was my thought. Yeah. I, I think I took some thyroid medicine at some point during my pregnancy with my daughter. Maybe so, I don't remember if I took it like since I was told to take it to the end. But Dr. Chafee said that was a good move to do that while you were pregnant so that I didn't screw her up by my low thyroid. So I'm glad about that. But so are you on a bunch of medications or? No and yes. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> so the chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Yeah. They say that we are genetically bad 
detoxers. And then once you have some kind of event where your inflammation blows up, Mm -hmm. then you just basically stop detoxing. And so toxins will flow through your bloodstream and your body and get caught in your liver and then recirculate. So you're, and it was crazy because every, I don't know how many days it is. I'm going to go with every 16 days I would get sick. So it was so weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So instead of letting these continue to recirculate, we're there, I take a prescription binder and it's different than betonite and clay. Betonite and clay has one charge and this has an opposite charge. Mm. So betonite and clay are great for grabbing heavy metals and mm. what else? Maybe parasites. I don't know. That's okay. great for grabbing some things. And then this, this binder that I take called chlorostyramine, it is a different and it pulls different toxins. So we're pulling those out. On top of that, I had to clean up my environment. Our home had a tiny bit of water damage, so tiny that when we had the people come in, they thought I was a hypochondriac. Oh, wow. They truly treated me like, this is the most insane thing we've ever heard of. Your house does not have water damage. Your house is beautiful. And I was like, no, I need you to take all of that out. And they were like, no. Oh, wow. (laughs) And so they tested it and they were like, we are, this is what we think needs to be done. And that's all they would do. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, but so we've cleaned up our environment, we're detoxing, and mm-hmm. there's more steps to this. Um, so they have some um, high potency oils like fish oil, but n- you can't buy the low quality because those are actually rancid and can cause more inflammation. So they're like right. outrageously expensive. We're hoping to get off all that. And okay. then I take two more things that are brand new. Because of the inflammation, that causes autoimmunity. The autoimmunity is messing with my thyroid. Mm, Okay. Based on my thyroid number, I'm taking a certain thyroid medicine. And then, but I'll tell you about that in a second. And then also the thyroid is kind of messing with the hormones. as So it's all a trickle big picture. So Mm -hmm. I'm taking some bioidentical progesterone cream. But my doctor said, once we get this inflammation fixed and here's the numbers and here's the indicators, this other stuff should calm down. Oh, so okay. So the goal is to not take it forever. The goal okay. is to just give my body some support because the mm-hmm. um, perimenopause symptoms are so awful. Oh, no. And the thyroid, if, you know, when your thyroid isn't functioning properly, you're so tired and my hair right. is falling out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so we're giving my hormones and my thyroid some support while we continue to work on this inflammation. Okay. I understand. Are you taking like, uh, armor or I take synthetic T3. Oh, and the okay. reason is because the natural ones come with a whole range of thyroid, but I already okay. have those. It's oh, okay. that my body is converting it into a negative. So I guess your body can convert it into T3 reverse, which causes more inflammation and. Oh, okay. So we don't want to add things that I'm not converting very well. Okay. I understand. So we're specifically adding, and I know some of your viewers are going to go, ah, he's doing it wrong. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Cause I get these comments all the time, oh my God. but it's based on all the numbers he ran. Yeah. Not, and he's very familiar with carnivores because many okay. people in this space are carnivores and our T3 is low for some reason. It's very, very common, but if you're not symptomatic, then it's probably not an issue, but I'm right. very symptomatic. Mm, I understand. I understand the feeling exhausted all the time. Uh, so many things change for me very fast. So can you tell me exactly what do you eat? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just tell you right now, during yeah. the summer, I eat a lot of sardines. Okay. I have no idea why. That's just what I crave. Okay. So. Great. And my sardines are sardines with fat. So okay. I'm not just eating sardines. That would be too low fat. Like I'll add some chosen avocado mayo and some mustard. And I make this delicious little creamy salad and I'll eat that a lot. Um, and great. then I I try to walk five miles at least three days a week, but I would love six. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard with kids and we're doing yes. a lot of traveling with my husband during the summer. But if I can walk five miles in the sun a day. That's glorious. And then yeah. I try to lift two to three times a week. Now in the summer, it's kind of, kind of heck, but sure. we're working on it. Um, now on a day when I'm not eating sardines, I yeah. will eat burger patties. 
I just get like the Walmart ones. I mm-hmm. really like if I'm going to treat myself, there's a box. It's called Sam's Choice 100% Angus. That's a treat for me. Otherwise, okay. just just the stack in the plastic bag. And then I eat a lot of picanha. <laughs> Do you eat picanha? Okay. I don't know what part of the cow that is. It's something totally different here. I probably guess. don't, but you need it in your life. You've had <laughs> top round roast. It's a roast, but they usually okay. cut the fat cap off because they're mm-hmm. dumb. <laughs> the smart people leave the fat cap on and it's like the top of the rump, I think. Mm-hmm. And that fat is just glorious. Oh, and man. the meat itself is very lean, but for some yeah. reason, super flavorful. Oh, so wow. I love picanha. Um, I love New York strip. I cook some ribeyes, but it's really not necessary to spend that money because right. I think New York's are great. And I think picanha is great. Um, I'll eat ground hamburger too. I love it. So okay. I went lion a while ago. And so I'm just kind of really into the cow. Okay. And maybe the reason I'm eating so many sardines is to make up for all that lion. Cause I think it's a good combo to be sea lion. That's a <laughs> red lion. meat yeah. and seafood. Sure. Oh, I love that. I like red meat. Uh, right now I go through phases of what part of the cow I want to eat. And so we got, uh, we like this part called Sobaco and that's the armpit. I know it sounds really funny, but you get it ground up. It's very soft. Um, last time we went shopping, we got, this sounds sacrilegious uh what is it brisket grounded ground brisket and that makes an amazing burger that makes ground brisket is an amazing burger you don't even have to put anything in the pan it just fries it fries it up <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's awesome you should try it ground that does brisket. great yeah mm-hmm. so that's uh and eggs i like eggs and i we love talking, eggs eggs too. don't love me no, but I, I no. do eat them even though they bog me down. Even the ones that are pasture raised, mm-hmm. organic. I'm sorry. And, about, and I even tried just yolks. That didn't seem to make a difference, but no, that's one food that I keep eating, even though I know it isn't a great, it's so nutritious too, Right. but it's obviously causing some inflammation. If every time I eat it, I'm tired. Oh yeah, for sure. I don't feel that way. I some if I don't eat enough, I'm starving like two hours later. So I have to try to get like six eggs in at once. <laughs> mm, and butter. Eggs oh, and man. butter. Mm. Oh man. I wish I just had like a stick that I can just eat right now on on the screen. I love butter. <laughs> I haven't had this in a while, but I absolutely love pork belly. If you think the carnivore bar or no. He, he eats them too. He has a very oh, oh, sexy oh, commercial like- about it where it's like the <laughs> carnivore bars on the side of the pool and he swims up shirtless and he's like, are you serious? Yes. You he serious? has the best carnivore bar commercial uh, probably on earth. Yeah. I can't even pop that. But, but my kids and I are obsessed with the carnivore bar. I let my kids eat it too, because even it's like, if you buy it the way I do, which is you buy it in bulk and you put the subscription on, you yeah. can get it down to about $12 a bar. Otherwise it's like 17. Oh, but wow, I expensive. feel so much better about my kids eating a carnivore bar sure. than a cliff bar, which is made oh, out yeah. of a ton of soy. Oh. <gasps> I see those all the time. Those stupid cliff bars. Oh, yeah. Man. So, soy so healthy. and oats and sugar. And <laughs> you know, I food. so much better. Do you know what a carnivore bar is? It's beef tallow with dehydrated beef. Oh, wow. It sounds amazing. It is. Awesome. And then you put a little salt on it. I wow, could go I for should. one right now. <laughs> I will have to get that when I go back to the U.S. and visit or something. Um, yes. Can you tell me, so you said 220, two something else, and then 185, 165, 175. Were 175. Your, how did you break through the set 175? A- to get down to the friend. 155? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> So I already know too, to break the 155, it's going to take laser focus, a hundred percent perfection, tracking and consistency, like no diverting, no dairy, Mm. no sweets. Um, maybe. So what I did last summer, cause I was 172 in the beginning of the summer was I started implementing and people aren't going to like this. It's going to trigger people Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I ate sardines. And for some people, like I've heard other people, they'll fast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, I hate fasting. So I ate sardines. Mm-hmm. 
And then Wednesday, I would eat a normal carnivore diet. And then maybe one of the days of the weekend, I would do a PSMF, protein What's sparing that? modified, where it's low fat. Oh, wow. So, you, so you're eating. So I do one day of low fat. And then every single day I walked in the sun, like mm. six days a week, I walked six to 10 miles. <gasps> Maybe it was closer to the six. I'm on a so it, it was a walk. ton of work. So <laughs> oh, here's okay. the thing. People said, hey, if you don't keep up with that, you won't keep the weight off. Well, I did. Sure. You, yeah. you just, you have to continue carnivore and I can't add dairy back. Dairy makes me gain 10 pounds a week. <laughs> it does. It makes me gain yeah. 10 pounds a week. So as long as I keep the dairy and the sweet out and just yeah. keep walking and keep eating carnivore, it has stayed off. Okay. But Good the for hormones you. have been an issue. So we're working on that. Mm. Like, you know, like the perimenopause, like one I was doing lion. I got the lowest I ever got. I was like down to 152. Mm -hmm. And then in a four day period, I gained 13 pounds. How? You can't oh. tell me. I didn't change my diet. I didn't change my food. That was hormones. Oh, it has to be. It has to be. And so other than my hormones, my weight has been very consistent. Okay. Yeah, I understand. So, I'm not saying people have to walk all that and everything to lose it. I would but love what I am to. saying is you have to track and be super consistent for okay. a couple of months to mm. break through it. Sure. Because In I need to get experience. through. Sure. That makes sense. So for me, like I, I don't know if I said this, I started at carnivore at 209.8 pounds. And I think before I went to the States, I... Last no last October, I got down to 179. I think it was 179 or 177. And I was like, woohoo! And now I'm going home. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to my diet. I gained 15 pounds because <laughs> I did not stick to my diet. And since November, I've been working off the 15 pounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now I I um I bounce between like 186 and 184, and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? I also don't want to get stressed. I don't want to be stressed about it. I feel a lot better than I did. I got the perfect thing for you. Okay. Here, so I've been in the same, you know, and now I'm on the upper end of that because of the hormone yeah. thing. Yeah. And here I, there's this video by Kelly Hogan and there's a couple of them, but the specific yeah. one I'm thinking of is her and Kathy David, go watch it. And, okay. and, and a video of Kelly Hogan's about to post on mine. Watch that one too, where okay. she says, listen, I was 165 to 170 for over two years. Oh, wow. I just thought this is where I'm going to be forever. Mm -hmm. But what mm -hmm. she really did by maintaining that weight was give her body some time to build trust and love and be comfortable where it was. And then she was able to go at it again. So mm -hmm. maybe my super hard method was me pushing it too hard. And so yeah. my thought right now is give my body some rest, give mm -hmm. it some nourishment, give it some love, tell it, I love it. I trust it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, keep learning, keep right. nourishing. And I think maybe in a year I'm going to give it another stab. We'll see. I don't sure. know when it will be, but <laughs> at some point I think our body will say, okay, we can do this again and, right. and, and give it another shot. And maybe it won't be so hard where right now, because my body said, Hey, you already lost 45 pounds or 50, wherever I'm at. Yeah. You already lost some weight. Instead, maybe it'll go, okay, we can do this again. And maybe it won't be so hard. Jillian Michael said, and this makes a lot of sense to me because, you know, I hear people talking about these shots and I hear some people in our space talking about them as just a peptide that if properly microdosed could be very helpful and therapeutic. Mm -hmm. But Jillian Michaels, who I don't even like, <laughs> had a really good point. And yeah. oh, by the way, Jillian Michaels, if you happen to be watching this, please come on my show because I, I like you enough to have you on my show. Uh, <laughs> I would love to ask her so many things. But uh, she said a very good point, which is when, just like you said with medicine, when you're putting that in your body, that's a natural thing. So then how does your body compensate for that? And she said, when people go off the shots, they no longer are producing that peptide as much mm -hmm. as they were before. And so they have mm -hmm. incredible hunger. Oh, wow. Oh, maybe that's why I was so hungry. Oh, man. It was respiratory. Have you tried them? 
No, but the HCG shots was a terrible idea. It was so terrible. It was, I don't, or not shots. They had the, the drops with the drops. super calorie restrictive diet. And someone, so after that, I went, my, my grandpa, I think this was right around when my grandfather was dying. And I went home and then my family saw me. Um, and then just like a couple months ago, my uncle was like, you looked very unhealthy. <laughs> uh, the guy that I was with at the time, he's like, so I, your bra doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> like, oh, like your boobs got to as well. Yeah, they had to as well. Oh, they shrunk. They After my surgery, my parents told me just recently, they were like, you were scary. They were oh, like, wow. you were so emotional mm. and scary. And so when I told everybody, I don't know, I think it was like six months after my surgery that I was like, I'm leaving my husband. They literally thought I had lost my mind. Oh, wow. Oh. And the truth <laughs> is that, I, sure, I get the timing wasn't great, but yeah. it was the right move. Yeah, I understand. Sometimes it needs to be done. Sometimes things need yeah. to be done to improve your quality of life. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Funny, funny. Life is funny. It's full of surprises and ups and it downs. It is. It is a hundred percent because at that time I thought to myself, so at 330 pounds, I was an alcoholic and I was in an abusive marriage and I was miserable. And I mm -hmm. thought, this is my life. Mm. And it's crazy that with a little faith, a whole lot of work mm -hmm. and some bravery, you can really turn things around. I'm sure people sure. don't want to see this, but I have a, a divorce tattoo. Oh, and pajamas on. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> and it says <laughs> courage, compassion, and hope because I had courage to leave. Compassion for myself and my kids that we deserved a better life and hope mm -hmm. that it could be better. Oh, wow. And you did that. Mm -hmm. And well, life is completely different now because of the bravery and, and the wow. faith and that's great. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to get out of those situations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're in a better place now. And yeah. um, and even your, your food is in a better place and like you're podcasting and doing amazing things. If you would have told me five years ago, hey, you're going to be eating nothing but meat and you're <laughs> going to talk on YouTube about The Biggest Loser, I would have said, you've lost your mind. Yeah, exactly. I because when you gain all that weight back, I swore I was never going to talk about this again. And I mm -hmm. also was like, social media, that's great for other people. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to go through that scrutiny ever again. <laughs> oh, man. And now look and at you. I am. It's coming. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> have you told your whole story? Have you Have you said everything you wanted to say? Yes. And I just really appreciate you having me on. I saw you Aww. with Courtney Luna and I was like, that is my kind of girl. I hope we can collaborate. So I appreciate Aww. that you did this. Oh, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad we became friends on Facebook and now we're actually friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know Sorry. This community's great. Yeah, it's awesome. It's so nice to meet like-minded people that have had similar struggles and then we've actually gotten through it. We've gone to the other side. And so I'm very passionate about wanting to tell people about this because I didn't realize how bad you can feel when your body is in a bad shape. I didn't realize how it affected you mentally, spiritually, mm. as a mom, you know, and I think both me and you are in a better place. Maybe we're not in the perfect place, but we're in a lot better place that we're willing to Way communicate, better. you know? Yeah. And, and there's so much self blame for that place that you're in. You're like, I'm tired right. and I'm miserable all the time, but it must be because I didn't work hard enough or I didn't sleep yeah. or oh. I drank too much coffee or something, but really, it's way deeper than that, guys. You have some healing to do, and there are mm -hmm. better foods. Oh, yeah, way better foods. And, and you're going to find the milk like. oh. and the chia seed smoothies no. and the soy smoothies. Um, There you go. We could keep talking forever. We're kind of forever. Honest. We're on so, a similar Thank wavelength. you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Come check me out at Adrian K. Gledhill. Yes, yes please. And I'm, thank you for uh, letting me know how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sled Hill. But sled Gled Hill. Hill. And you can do a lot of sledding in Minnesota. Um, I will put her YouTube channel below. Please, please go check out her channel. And I hope a lot of people watch this. So uh, I hope we're entertaining enough to keep the YouTube algorithm happy. 